Welcome to the Ultimate Beginner Quilt Series by Fat Quarter Shop. In this series, I'm gonna be showing you how to make a quilt all the way from the start to the finish. This series is sponsored by Moda Fabrics and Eversung Sewing Machines. I'm gonna be giving you lots of tips and we're gonna be building our first quilt together. In this video, I'm working on block six, which is the lattice block. It is much easier than last week's. So whereas last week's was a little bit more challenging, we went a little bit easier this week. We're gonna be working on learning how to make corner squares, which are the squares that are gonna go on the outside of the big squares. So let's get started. So to start, download your free pattern that's in the description box. And we're gonna look through what we're cutting and what we're making. You're gonna have four different fabrics and you're gonna cut one six and a half inch square from each. You're gonna have four different B fabrics and you're gonna cut two three and a half inch squares from each. So we're first gonna cut our fabric A's. So I'm just gonna pull my fabrics and stack them. Make sure you've ironed them before you start. And you can see that you've used some of these fabrics before. So I'm just gonna keep, I'm just gonna cut from one corner and I'm keeping my salvages together right here. You don't have to do that, I just like to do that. So nice and flat. And we're gonna cut one six and a half inch square. So I'm gonna take my six and a half inch ruler and this is six and a half inches this way and I need to have six and a half inches here. So I need to fit it where that will fit. So what I'm gonna do is just cut three sides from here. One, two, and then I can pull these to the side, get those out of my way. You can cut one here, and then you can just rotate this and line up the six and a half. So you're just gonna line this up this up and this up. And those are going to be your A squares. So you can get your design board and put your A's on there. Okay? And then we're going to do our B. So from here we're going to cut two three and a half inch squares. So three and a half plus three and a half is seven. So you really need your ruler to be to where you can cut a three and a half by seven. So I am going to just lay my ruler. There's seven inches here and three and a half here. And you see that I've given myself at least half an inch on each side just to have a little bit extra. And I'm going to just cut this little section out. Turn my fabrics, I'm gonna cut three and a half. So again, when I'm cutting, line up the top and the bottom, line up the top and the left. And when I rotate, you see I just use my finger gently so that I don't move my fabrics. And we're gonna cut three and a half, using the lines on my ruler. Move that slightly and then cut the next three and a half. Okay, so we're gonna take these to our design board and we're gonna label these as B's. And now we're gonna take the fabric B's and on the wrong side, draw a line from corner to corner on all of them. And when you do, this is gonna be a corner square technique. I like to use a friction pin. It will disappear with heat later. And so we're gonna draw a line on all eight of these squares. And on this quilt, there's not a right or a wrong side to each of these solids. 
so it doesn't matter but if you're using a print fabric just make sure you're on the wrong side Okay, so now I'm gonna just stack my bees where I put all the colors together. And then we're going to go ahead and pair them with the fabric A that they go with. So here's my bees and my A's and I'm gonna follow my pattern and we're gonna go ahead and pin everything so that we can go to the sewing machine and stitch all of these at once because your stitches will be far enough away to where you can do that. So I'm gonna pin this, and when you pin these, you wanna make sure the corner of your fabrics touch exactly, and I'm gonna pin twice. I won't pin anywhere near the line, so you actually don't even need to remove the pins until after you sew. And you want your line to go diagonally and not this way. So I'm gonna do this for all of them, and then we're gonna to go to the sewing machine. So now we're going to go to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch directly on that line from corner to corner with the 2.0 stitch length. So now we're going to stitch directly on that center line. You're going to stitch directly on the line. And I'm going to chain piece, which means I'm just going to keep piecing. I'm not going to cut apart. And now we're just gonna cut apart the three from the back so we can keep chain piecing.
and we're going to go to the other side and start stitching the other side. And now you can take this last one off. We're just going to keep stitching. apart and then we're going to go start cutting the corner squares back and pressing. So these corners on the end when you flip them back those are considered corner square triangles but if you iron them just like this and don't cut you're gonna have a ton of bulk in your quilt. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut a quarter inch away. So you can use your big ruler or your small one and you're just going to use your quarter inch line and trim. Now this is within your seam allowance, so it does not have to be perfect, but I do like to get, to get it to be about a quarter inch away. And now we're going to press. So now first you're gonna set your seam. Setting your seam just locks your seams. And we're gonna press one to the outside. So first we'll finger press toward the outside. Put the edge of your iron right on there. And then we're gonna press one toward the center. So you're pressing them opposite ways and I'm gonna show you why in a second. It's gonna make all of your seams nest, which will help it going to make all of your seams nest. So when you look at the back, one goes towards the outside and one goes towards the inside. It doesn't matter which one you do because they're going to look the same if you turn it. So now I'm going to follow my pattern 
tend to lay my pieces out. And the first thing you wanna make sure is you're creating an X. So all of your corner squares are kind of on the outside. And then we want to lay it where our seams nest. So this one goes towards the outside. We need this one to go towards the inside. So when you lay them together, they'll nest. And so this one goes towards the outside. This one needs to go towards the inside. And so you're just gonna make sure they nest before we start pinning. So now they should all nest. So we'll put these right sides together and right side together and we're going to pin. So the first thing we'll do is pin the very outside, both outsides. And then we're gonna pin this intersection where the seams nest. And you can see that if you push this, it will just stop. And you're gonna pin right there. And that should be enough pinning. Do the same thing on the other one. And you can just kind of feel it. It'll just pop in place. I'm just gonna pin once. And then we're gonna to go to our sewing machine change our foot to a quarter inch foot and stitch all the way down. We're gonna chain piece and leave this stitch there. So we're gonna change our foot to a quarter inch foot. And now we're gonna just stitch you're going to leave your pin in right here until you get right to it. Pull it out right before I get to it. We're just going to keep sewing, keep chain piecing. pin in until we get right to it. And I can see right here the green is kind of popping out. I'm going to just pull that under with my so that it's nice and flat on the edge. And now we can go iron. Now we're leaving this connected. We're gonna set our seam. We're gonna press them in opposing directions. So I'm gonna finger press toward the yellow. Put the iron right on that crease. And then we're gonna to press toward the green, which is the other way. Finger press that down. And you can see all four of the pieces together. And you can see at each intersection, my points match. And now we're going to put this together. And you can see that it's still connected by that, by that thread. And that's great because then it keeps it all in place. And now I'm gonna pin right in the center. So same thing, it's gonna nest. When you put your fingers here, you should feel it nice and firm. You will feel that there's no gap in there. And I'm gonna put a pin on each side to keep it nice and straight. We'll pin at each end. And pinning really is the key to this block. If you pin really well, all of your seams will come out nice and perfect. So here, you just put your finger and move it until it nests. Do the same on the other, and we're gonna stitch down 
this final seam of block six. So again, I'm gonna pull that out right when I get to the pin. Try not to sew over your pins. Sometimes if you sew over your pins, you might break a needle. You could hurt your machine. So I just try not to do that. that we can look and make sure that all of our intersections meet up and they do all of my points match so we can go iron so we're gonna set our seam and one thing that I think is pretty important when you're ironing is to really get your seam flat so that you don't have bulk in your seam so get it really nice and flat And now we're gonna just trim the little slivers off and we will be done with block six. So I can see that all of my points match and you can be total perfectionist and fix that and if they're not, you can leave them. It's totally up to you if you want your quilt to have a couple mistakes or no mistakes, whatever you wanna do, it's up to you. Mine just happened to match up. I'm gonna turn that over and now you can see how all of the seams nest. You can see the seams going opposing ways and right here I have a little pucker. I'm gonna iron that out so that doesn't show through onto the front. And now we can go cut all the little slivers off the edge of our block. So you can see on the edge of this block, I've got a lot of little slivers. You can leave your block just like this or you can trim them off. Again, totally per personal preference there. I like to make my edge really nice and straight and it just takes the little threads off and it evens up the edge of your block and so I line up the top line and the side And this one seems to have a little bit more than my previous ones, and that's okay. And this is your beautiful block six. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell to be notified on all notifications when we have new videos. And check back next week for block seven. See you then.